गुड मॉर्निंग व्यूअर्स एंड वेलकम टू ट्रांस इंडिया रियल पीपल रियल इमोशंस द ऑटो एक्सपो हैज ऑलवेज बीन एन एक्साइटिंग प्ले ग्राउंड फॉर द ऑटोमोबाइल इंडस्ट्री बिसाइड जस्ट व्हीकल्स कंपनीज ऑल्सो शो केस द टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट दे हैव टू ऑफर नीडलेस टू से दैट द ऑटोमोबाइल इंडस्ट्री इज लार्जली ड्रिवन बाई टेक्नोलॉजी more so in the current phase because of changing environment conditions today we will be talking to mr ashwath ram the managing director of cummins india one of india's leading manufacturers of engines and related technologies in his current role ashwath leads cummins in india which is a group of seven legal entities across 200 locations in the country with a combined turnover of over rupees 17900 crores in 2021 and employing over 10000 individuals ashwa joined cummins in columbus indiana usa in 1991 over the last 31 years he has led business unit operations as well as key strategic transformations for the engine business and power systems in india ashwa also serves as the managing director of tata cummins overseeing the cummins joint venture and building relationships with large oem partners customers and suppliers He has implemented world-class Six Sigma and project management improvements, and has driven supply chain excellence across global engine business unit joint ventures. While the automobile companies are shifting towards cleaner vehicles, there is also the tremendous pressure of the government to meet prescribed emission norms. India was one of the fastest countries to move from BS4 to BS6 norms, and with effect from April 2023, we will be moving a notch up to BS6 Phase 2 norms. Well the heart of any vehicle is its engine which is also in the center of discussion when it comes to meeting emission norms and Cummins has been inventing power for over a century that's right over 100 years coming back to the playground of the automobile industry the auto expo Cummins India also took this opportunity to showcase its products and latest inventions in technology that aims to make the world a cleaner and greener place With alternate fuels being widely discussed as the future of automobiles, Cummins India is always one step ahead to provide technology that would drive these cleaner vehicles, especially in the commercial vehicle segment. Trans India spoke to Ashwat to know more about the technology upgrades and inventions at Cummins. Coming up after this very short break, our interaction with Mr. Ashwat Ram. Stay tuned. You are watching Trans India, real people, real emotions. महिंद्रा ये गारंटी देते हैं कि उनका ब्लेजो एक्स सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज देता है वरना कर दीजिए ट्रक वापस सॉरी अजय महिंद्रा फ्यूरियो है एक्शन महिंद्रा गारंटी देते हैं कि उनका फ्यूरियो सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज देता है नहीं तो एक्चुअली जयो महिंद्रा जयो है थोड़ा चेंज है एंड एक्शन महिंद्रा ये गारंटी देते हैं की उनका जयो सबसे चल क्या रहा है यहाँ पे मैम ये चारो ट्रक ज्यादा माइलेज देते हैं चारो तो ऐसा बोलो ना ब्लेजो एक्स फ्यूरियो फ्यूरियो सेवन और जयो महिंद्रा के ये सभी ट्रक्स देते हैं सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज की गारंटी नहीं तो कर दीजिए इन्हें वापस महिंद्रा देश की सबसे ज्यादा माइलेज देने वाली ट्रक रेंज वेलकम बैक टू ट्रांस इंडिया रियल पीपल रियल इमोशंस वी आर एट दो ऑटो एक्सपो टॉकिंग टू द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ कमिंस इंडिया मिस्टर अश्वत राम So, I'm so much has been happening in terms of you know uh, alternate fuels and changes. The technology is changing. Is Cummins leading the race, or is Cummins giving what is required? So, Cummins has always been a leader in technology. The only reason Cummins has survived now beyond hundred years and sixty plus years in India is because we have introduced extremely innovative. as well as dependable products for our customers we are not into passenger vehicles or we are not into small vehicles where the usage is low we are into commercial vehicle applications and robust applications where the people who use our applications needed to work 24 by 7 and give a, give them the best tco so we have always developed innovative and robust products what we are introducing here at this auto expo is what we are calling our fuel agnostic platform and the core of the fuel agnostic platform is our ability to run hydrogen in an internal combustion engine so we can take 
an existing internal combustion engine and of course through upgradations and many many introductions of new technology burn grey and even blue hydrogen in an internal combustion engine. So we do not have to wait till we get green hydrogen which is 99.99% pure hydrogen which is what is required to run a fuel cell electric vehicle. We don't have to wait for that time. We can with today's availability, we can run hydrogen in vehicles. But what the fuel agnostic platform is, there are many alternate fuels available as they go towards green uh, ecosystem. So currently we have diesel which is going from BS6-1 to BS6-2, eventually it will go to uh, BS7 and in that Cummins has always led with the, the best technology uh, in the market. Now the same agnostic platform can also run LNG, can run CNG, can run biodiesel, can run with ethanol blends and eventually run hydrogen as well and that's what we are launching. How uh, cost effective is it to you know change the engine uh, configuration to these fuels? Yeah, so today it's if I say X is the cost of a current vehicle system, the cost of a hydrogen system, internal combustion system may be 1.5x and that's because we do not have scale. Because what changes is not only the engine, the engine portion, the cost increment is not very significant. It may be 1.1x or 1.2x. But what also changes is the storage delivery system. You have carbon fiber tanks instead of metal tanks which okay you have the whole hydrogen delivery system your meters your walls your compressors your whole electronics which manage all of that so those things are not yet in scale and that's why it's still uh, expensive now when you compare that to a fuel cell electric vehicle that is 5x which means the hydrogen internal combustion engine vehicle will still be one third the cost of a fuel cell electric vehicle. But I'm going forward, which fuel do you think will be the more popular ones apart from diesel of course? Of course LNG and CNG as they become available will uh, become uh, very popular. Uh, but India is a fuel deficient nation, right? So we import our oil from Russia and from the Middle East etc. And we do not have our own lithium, we don't have some of the rare earth metals. Those metals are controlled by China or they are only available in Latin America, some parts of Africa and Australia. So for us to develop that whole infrastructure of battery and lithium, that's going to take a lot of time and it's very expensive. But what we do have abundant is sunshine. And so with that sunshine, we can produce clean, green solar energy and wind energy in large quantities. And with that energy, clean energy, we can take water and convert it into hydrogen and oxygen. And that hydrogen can then be used as a fuel. 70% of the cost of producing uh, hydrogen is in the electricity. And if that electricity cost is almost zero because it is uh, solar, then the cost of production of hydrogen also reduces. As the cost of hydrogen drops below $3, then hydrogen becomes the most exciting fuel to work with because it has all the properties for uh, heavy duty applications and the ability to take it to multiple locations. Right. You know, we've been talking about uh, uh, a lot of fleet owners and they are very apprehensive about you know, what kind of fuel to use and how will the driver adapt to you know maintaining the truck basically. So how, how, how can these ch uh, challenges be looked at? So first of all, which is why we have launched this fuel agnostic platform. So the core of the platform, the blocks and the, all the innards are similar to what they are used to today. All that is different is going to be the head and all the some of the supporting infrastructure. And of course, companies like Cummins, we have set up thousands of service centers around the country. There is no 50 kilometer radius anywhere in India where a Cummins service dealer or an engineer is not present. So we have set up the support network to be able to support our customers anywhere in the country and to make sure that their uptime is maximum. 
Finally, Ram, how much is Cubans Global helping the Indian market? Because the technology is flowing in from there and much advanced. Right. So, Cummins uh, is not only an Indian company, it's also a global company. So, we have been in India for 60 years, but we've also been uh, in uh, a 100-year-old plus global company. And so, every part of Cummins that exists anywhere in the world also exists in India. In the last 10 to 15 years, Cummins has invested over a billion dollars in India to set up infrastructure. We have 21 factories uh, in uh, India. We've also set up one of the biggest tech centers in the world in India. We have 2,500 engineers working in India. So 70% of all the development uh, which happens in the tech center is for our global markets uh, as well. So there's a continuous exchange of technology, data, information, uh, and we now have 12,000 plus uh, local employees and a whole supplier network and a whole bunch of people who are employed because of our uh, ecosystem in, in the automotive space and in manufacturing. So it's a very, very exciting uh, time. So global comments and, you know, local comments is works in a very parallel manner to make sure that uh, uh, we keep having the, the best technologies and the best blend of technologies for the market. And you see the volumes going up and up from here on? Uh, I think the last uh, three, four years in, uh, for India, the market has been weak. 20, the recession uh, in the commercial vehicle market which started in 2019 uh, has continued. 2020 was a COVID year, so, so it was uh, pretty much a write-off. 21 uh, also was impacted by COVID and so the demand was not great. 22, we just have begun recovery. So we're already starting off from a very, very low base. Now, if you look at our economy, if we have to become a $3 trillion and then a $5 trillion economy, and you look at where China was when it was at a similar scale, they had between 95 and 2010, 15 years of straight growth in the commercial vehicle uh, and off-highway markets. Now, let's assume that we do not grow that aggressively, but even if we grow, if the economy grows at a 7 to 9% GDP, I see the Indian trucking market and automotive market just to meet the demands of our infrastructure and our growth will have to grow significantly and almost have to double in that period. And plus the strapping policy will also help? Exactly. Absolutely. Scrapping policy will uh, will help and uh, also the availability of different fuels for different market segments will also help in uh, the vehicle population increasing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well friends, that was our interaction with Mr. Ashwatram. You can rest assured that the manufacturers will be putting their best foot forward, not just to make the environment better, but also to improve the earnings of the end user. And one of the key components of improving efficiency and reducing operation costs is the engine. Cummins is working tirelessly around the globe to get the best engine technology that meets the above parameters. We will be back again next week with an interaction with Mr. S. Saravanan, Chief Technology Officer at Ashok Leyland, who will tell us more about the developments at Ashok Leyland. Please do remember to subscribe to our channel, Trans India, Real People, Real Emotions. Until next week, stay safe, Jai Hind.